welcome back to this flip project. It's now been completely renovated and I'll show you around in a short while. However, this one's a little bit different because it was set as a challenge to my kids for them to double my money. Hey, if you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel, I share with you my 15 plus years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your own property investing business. This video, I wanna break down for you in three segments. Firstly, I wanna show you what we've done, explain the work that we've done on this property, the value add bit. Then secondly, I wanna show you how we managed to get 30 offers on this property when we put it up for sale with only two lots of viewings. And finally, I wanna break down all the numbers so you can see, did we actually achieve our goal? Did we double our money on this project? This house is a regular three bedroom mid terrace house. There's nothing special about it. We're just north of Birmingham. It's an ex local authority house and we haven't really done any structural work on it. The focus when we're flipping properties is always about what's the end product gonna look like and who is it we're targeting. So the people that this property would suit would be the first time buyers, small families, uh, and secondly, it may be an investor who wants to use it as a buy to let. That's really the two categories of people we're targeting. So your first time buyers, and your bike lane investors. Now, there might be some other people that might be interested in it, for example, downsizers, people selling a flat, moving to a house, but that's not really our core market. So when we're creating the product, we've got to think about who is it that actually this property is going to be for, or what is it that they want? And remember, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I talk about when someone comes into a property, they're literally spending about 10 minutes to make a massive buying decision, sometimes hundreds of thousands of pounds that they're going to spend, and they've only made uh, spent 10 minutes looking at the actual product. So every bit of detail is really important to get right. But at the same time, we have to balance that with, we're not building multi-million pound mansions here. These are regular starter homes. So we have to balance with what the product's gonna look like versus how much it's gonna cost as well. So we set a budget of 25,000 pounds and I got the kids involved to say, hey, you've got 25 grand, you need to renovate this house, flip it for a profit, and you need to give me at least 25 grand profit back, i.e. doubling my money on the spend. So let's talk about what we actually did in the house. Now, the two core things that we would always focus on is the kitchens and bathrooms, because in an empty property like this, there isn't a huge amount to see. So the kitchens and bathrooms really need to be nice for the space that we've got as well. So in the bathroom, what we've done is gone for modern gray slate colors, and also a touch of black fittings within the bathroom to give it that nice modern look, but also the kind of thing you'd maybe see in a spa or a really nice hotel, fully tiled bath. Now this will probably cost us a little bit more than if we'd left the uh, bathroom with just maybe a few tiles around the bath itself um, and over the basin. But what we've done is spent a little bit more to make it look a lot nicer because remember, as I said, people don't spend a lot of time looking at these things and these are the little things that will make a difference. Now this property was already double glazed throughout using white PVC plastic. However, what we wanted to do is again, give it a little bit of a modern touch. So rather than replacing all the doors and windows in the property, what we've done, we've replaced the front ones with a modern dark gray ash look and a composite door. So it gives it again, a fresh modern look to the property. The doors and windows at the back of the property, we left as they are because they were in perfect good order and serviceable. We just wanted to create a modern look to the property. Again, balancing how much we spend versus what it's gonna look like. Then we've got the electrics, the plumbing and heating to think about. The electrics were generally in good order. However, we upgraded some of the sockets and the switches to a more modern look, which is a kind of matte uh, steel look that we've gone for. But with the sockets as well, we've added USB sockets throughout the property, not every single property, but certain points, for example, in bedroom, living room, in the kitchen, meaning it's very easy to plug in and charge your devices. These are the little bits of detail that people will spot when they're walking around the property. And then we put light fittings on throughout the whole house just to create that nice little homely feeling as well. The boiler in the property was only a few years old, so rather than replacing it, what we did, we serviced the boiler, but we replaced many of the radiators, which more modern radiators, like the tall dark grey radiators. So rather than going for the old-fashioned magnolia and white, which is what we've done for many years, now we tend to go for the greys and whites tend to be the common colour that we'll use. Now the kitchen in this property is relatively small and also at the front of the house, so we had to work with what we've got there space-wise, and what we've done, we've gone some nice, clean, modern-looking units, which is a gloss grey unit, which is handleless, 
and also what that means when it's a cleaner look like that, i.e. no handles on there and it's all glossy, it just feels bigger as well. Having a nice glossy worktop on as well also adds to that touch. The units have been finished with a nice glossy worktop which actually looks like granite but it's a traditional laminate finish. Then the other items that are in the kitchen, for example the cooker, the oven, the extractor, the sink, the tap, these little bits of detail is where we want to make them look nice because again there's not a lot to see in the kitchen once the units are uh, fitted, you've got the worktop on. So the things that we see the eyes drawn to, we want to make them nicer, so a nice tap for example to finish off on the, on the sink, uh, you've got two bowls on the sink again with a small kitchen, adding little things like that really helps. And with the cooker, having a nice big cooker, again, it's a rarity on a, an entry level property to find things like that. And it just adds a little bit of touch, especially if somebody enjoys cooking by seeing something like that, it just makes it feel much more nicer. The boiler is tucked away in a cupboard and the only other integrated appliance that we have is a dishwasher. Again, dishwasher is not very expensive, but adds a nice little touch that when somebody's moving into property, there's not very much for them to do. They can just bring their stuff in and they're ready to go. With it not being a huge kitchen, what we want to do is use some of the other space to the side for a utility space. So the washing machine, the dryer, a large fridge can go to the side. So that means you've still got all the things that you need very close to the kitchen, even though it's only a small kitchen. For flooring in the kitchen, the bathroom, the utility area, the downstairs toilet, we've put nice large tiles, modern looking all the way throughout. And then the rest of the ground floor has got laminate flooring, which is again a gray finish with a wood look. And on the stairs and the bedroom, we've gone for a nice thick carpet with a thick underlay. And when people walking around, it really feels luxurious. Other things that we've done in the property is create a downstairs toilet. Again, it's a nice convenient thing to have in a modern house. And we've done some plastering work, so it's a nice smoother finish uh, throughout the property. Then we finished off by decorating in whites and greys, but also with a couple of feature walls just to set it off that little bit and give that luxurious feel. And then finally, we've just tidied up the outside areas just to make it more usable and function. And hey, we're filming today, but it seems to all be overgrown today as well, but we'll get that cut back before we hand over the keys. We filmed at this property a couple of times during the early stage of the renovation and I'll link those videos up at the end so you can see what it was looking like during the renovation. The thing is we started this renovation about a year ago. Now that's not great when it comes to flipping property because you want to be in out fast in order to be getting that profit out, recycling and moving on. We have had a few challenges with this project as it's gone along, but that's no different from any renovation that you might be doing. So our material costs have risen, so it means it's cost us more to do the uh, project. And also because the time scale is taken, it's taken much longer with some lockdowns, working on other projects as well, getting other projects completed. It meant moving the trades around, getting the trades here to get certain things done. Then there was also supply issues, for example, trying to get the, uh, the kitchen worktops that we needed in, certain tiles there was a shortage on. So we were part finished and really couldn't complete all the tiling until all the materials were here. However, what's gone in our favor is that the market prices have risen over the last year. However, this project's a little bit different. As I mentioned earlier, I'd set a challenge for my kids to double my money on the project. 
Now I have four kids, one of them still at school. The three older ones work with me in the business. And although they work with me in the business, they're not really involved on a day-to-day -day basis like flipping property. They work in different sectors within our business. And what I wanted to do with this project was to pull the three together for them one to work together and also work out how to make money from this property rather than me just telling them or doing it for them. So I took a little bit of a hands-off approach and what I did, I set the budget at 25 grand. That was to include everything. That includes the purchase cost, the sales cost, the work we're gonna do on the property. It was a little bit tight, but that's why I set them to see what they would do. And then I kind of step back a little bit and I say, hey, you get on with it, you manage a trade, you've got access to the people that we have access to and see what is it you can do. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, there were a few times where I was getting a little bit nervous in terms of how long it's taken. I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? Am I gonna to have to step in and sort this out? But I kind of you know, bit my tongue and kind of stayed back and I said, okay, let them just get it done, let them get it finished. Now, I've gotta put my hand up. There were a couple of times where I did get involved just to make sure it stayed on track and it didn't fall off the rails because of a few key decisions that they were gonna probably end up making wrong. So you might be thinking right now, that's great, but can you give us the numbers? Well, we bought this property for £90,000. Yes, it was a good buy. So we acquired it at £90,000 and then I set a budget of £25,000. And their job was to turn that £25,000 into £50,000 for me so I get my original renovation money back and I get a profit that equates to the same amount of money. So there's two major mistakes that they've made on this project. The first one is they've taken way too long to turn this property around. Really, we could have done two or maybe even three projects, at least two in the time they've taken to do this one. Now, I know some of the things are beyond their control, but they really should be on it in terms of getting it turned around fast. The second mistake that they made is they spent nearly £37,000 on this property. That was way above the 25 grand that initially had set the budget. And yes, that additional money had to come from me to ensure that we get the project finished. However, something else was going on that I was keeping a very close eye on, and that was the market prices were rising very quickly. So I wasn't overly concerned that we were spending a little bit more because our material costs were higher as well. Some of the trades cost us more money because some of our regular guys were busy on our other projects as well, so our costs were higher in terms of getting this finished. As I said, I wasn't really overly concerned about that because I could see that the market's rise, that meant the profit margin is gonna be rising as well. All in all, we spent just under 130,000 pounds on the property. We have now sold the property and exchange contracts at 180,000 pounds. So that's a profit margin in excess of 50,000 pounds. Now, if you're doing this as a part-time thing, maybe alongside your day job, and let's say you don't make a 50,000 pound profit, let's say you make the 25,000, which is the initial target, 25 to 30 is what I was aiming for as a profit margin on this project. But let's say you just made that on a property, a regular property like this. There's not, as I said, there's nothing special about this particular house. That would mean you'd be making more money from flipping one house on the side than the average salary in this country. You may also be wondering, 40,000 pounds on this house? That's a lot of money to spend. It is, but at the same time, that is not just the renovation, that's all other costs as well. So our initial purchase costs, our legal fees, etc., that were all included in that budget. And then when we held the property, any holding costs that we've got, when we exit the property now as we're completing the sale, costs that we've got, legals, etc., all of the costs are included within there. So that's kind of a net figure. So that £40,000 isn't just the renovation money, it's the total monies that we've spent additional to the purchase price. So we achieved £180,000 as a sale price for this property. The interesting part of the story is we managed to get an exchange of contracts in just over three weeks. You might be wondering right now, how on earth did I do that? So let me explain. This required a lot of planning and it's something I have done before. What I did, I set up a completion race, but there's a number of steps involved in order for that to work. Firstly, what I did, I listed with an estate agent that would allow us to do the viewings. So that means we're in control of what's happening as opposed to leaving it to the agent for them to do the viewings and communicate back to us because I wanted to see and speak to all the potential buyers. So then after doing market research, we'd worked out that actually it may be possible to achieve 190,000 for the property, but that's probably a bit on the high side because a couple of properties nearby have achieved those kinds of figures. But I think that's a little bit toppy. And 180 is probably where it's gonna be with 170 being actually a very attractive price for a property like this. So what we did, we listed the property for offers over 170,000 pounds. So now not only did you have a modernized property, but an attractive price where there's not many others like this that are available. So of course that caused a lot of attention on the property. But the next step was then not to book all those viewings in as they were coming through, because there were more than 100 viewings that actually happened at the property with way more that still wanted to view. But firstly, I set one viewing day. So that meant I picked a Sunday where most people were probably gonna be available. And I started literally from about eight in the morning to about nine in the evening doing viewings with about three to four per half an hour. 
So essentially I was doing block viewings every half an hour back to back. I did take a little break in between for about half an hour just to be able to get a breather and some lunch. But boy, was it a tiring day. The house was rammed with people because it wasn't just one person come to view. Often it was a couple or a family and you got kids running around. Yeah, I had bowls of chocolates put out so keep everybody busy as well. And people are wandering around looking at the house. So I wasn't really showing anybody around, but I did give them a set of notes to say, hey, look, we're the owners, we're the developers. We buy property, renovate and sell. And that's what we're doing. If you've got any questions, come and chat to me. If you're interested in making an offer, come and speak to me as well. So we had one block viewing throughout the day, and then we still had lots of other people that were interested. Offers started coming in straight away. In fact, probably within the first hour, the offers started rolling in. Some of them were very high. In fact, we we're already reaching 190,000 pounds in terms of offers within the morning of the first lot of viewings. So we got a number of offers already in within the first day. We still had many other people that couldn't attend on the Sunday that wanted to view and new people that were seeing the property or uh, being advertised and they wanted to see as well. So what we did, we set one more day for viewings, which was a shorter day. And in total, over those two days, I did 100 viewings at the property. And we had more than 30 offers. I think it's about 31 offers we had from those two lots of viewings, which sounds crazy. But some of it is because how I'd set it up. I priced it low to get a lot of interest. People are turning up. There's loads of other people here viewing the property. There's not much competition i.e. in terms of properties like this available and of course that meant that people were putting fairly healthy offers there were two offers that still came in below the 170,000. even though we'd set offers over 170 you get some cheeky people do hey i'd do the same so at this point now we had more than 30 offers on the table and what we were going to do which one were we going to accept the agent is on my case about come on we need to get this wrapped up we need to accept an offer and i'm saying no no hang on because what I did then was speak to each and every person individually, the agent I picked because I was doing the viewings, it meant I was able to communicate with everybody. I had a conversation with every single offer. And my conversation was this, hey, look, thank you for your offer. Is there any movement on the offer that you've made? Most people thinking, oh, this is gonna be a bit of a bidding war, but that's not my intention. I just want to see what their movement was because some people had offered less than 180, some people had offered more than 180. And I said to him, hey, look, whatever the answer was that was really relevant, what I was saying to him is, the offers we had were up to 190,000 pounds at that time. We'd had a number of offers at 190,000. But what we're willing to do is accept an offer at 180,000 pounds, subject to it being a contract race. Now, of course, many people are not really familiar with that. They don't really know what it means. Many of the buyers are first time buyers. They don't really understand the concept. And there were a few buy to let investors, which maybe have understood as well what the process was, but most people didn't. So I had to go through and explain what that meant. And essentially what it did mean that I'm gonna make the property available for more than one person to buy. And so they would be racing to be able to get to the finishing post. I get all their documentation, everything in order and say, hey, we're ready to exchange contracts. And the first person that gets to that point, my sister will exchange contracts with them. And they would be the buyer and everybody else that's in that race would lose out. Now, of course, there were some people that were excited about this. They had the, they had the desire to want to get involved. Said, yes, we could do this. And I emphasize to everybody, you may have the desire to do this, but it's going to be down to your solicitors and your mortgage broker's ability to be able to move quickly. You need to go away, speak to them before you make a decision to participate in the race. Because I knew many solicitors and brokers were gonna put the clients off and say, oh no, it's gonna to take too long, we won't be able to do it, you might lose money. They're gonna put them off. So what happened next was, it's kind of expected, but not necessarily what I was expecting. Slowly, they started to drop off. Oh no, I've spoken to my solicitor, he says no, it's not gonna be right for me. Well, I've spoken to the broker, and they slowly started whittling down and down. And we ended up with about five people and I'm still waiting to speak to. And I'm getting quite nervous at this stage thinking, am I going to mess this up and there's been nobody that's going to participate in this race and I've just lost 30 yard buyers. And fortunately, what we ended up with was three people that were willing to participate in the race and understood what the race meant. And because it was a race, everybody understood they needed to move quickly. So as soon as our solicitors issued the contract, they went hell for leather to try and get moving. Now, one straight away got their survey done. The other one was not far behind in terms of doing that. And the third one was a little bit further behind. I think she was a little bit unclear in terms of um, pressure she needed to put on her broker and her solicitor to move quickly. She was moving much more slowly. But then within about three weeks, two of them were getting quite close to the finishing line. And yes, the mortgages and application, all that's being done. It just goes to show where there's a will, there's a way to be able to do this. And then literally today, just past three weeks, we've exchanged contract with the first one to reach the finishing post. Now, of course, what that means, two people have now lost out in this race. They'll have spent money with their solicitors. They'll have spent money on searches. They'll have spent money with their mortgage broker as well. 
And so something I didn't tell them at the time was that if they lose the race, I would contribute a thousand pounds towards their costs. So once it's all wrapped up, we'll do that. So the other two will send them a thousand pounds each. That will probably cover most of their costs. Now they're still gonna have lost out of the house and they weren't expecting that money. But actually what it meant for me and the reason that we've done this is because it meant the certainty of getting this done straight away. Now, if we look at this versus the traditional model, if we'd listed with an agent, we would have got offers and we would have started moving forward. And generally, these things are not unusual to take about three months. And when they start the process, maybe there's things come out that they're not quite happy about and they want to change things. Uh, and if these things can drag out for three months and it's quite common for that to happen. But also, my concern is the market's now starting to ease a little bit. We'll start seeing signs of that and it'll start slowing down. So if you start slowing down, what might happen is a buyer might be, say, three months in, the market might be very different, interest rates might still be rising, and they may get a little nervous and back out and decide maybe it's not the right time for them to be buying their first home. And if that happens, then I'll have to start the process again with another buyer, and that could be another three months. So in theory, I could be six months in trying to sell this property. So rather than taking the higher figure of 190,000, we made it really attractive at 180,000 and then found a few that understood that what the race was and they're willing to participate because they were confident that the people around them would help them push forward and be able to get this done. It meant we had the certainty that we'll get this done very quickly. And that's exactly the outcome that we've achieved. Yes, could we have potentially made more money? Potentially, but we could have lost money as well because we could have sat around, waited for six months, been in a situation where we're still trying to struggle to sell. And what this did, it focused everybody's minds that this needs to happen now and not drag your feet with it. So contract rates can be a very powerful way to be able to sell property, especially in a heated hot market. And I said, I've used this type of arrangement before. Most people don't understand it. Most people won't participate, but you don't need 10 people to participate. I didn't need 30 people in this race. I just needed a small handful and three was enough to make it work and it achieved the outcome that we wanted. Now, if you've enjoyed this content, particularly about the explanation about how a contract race works or even the property tour generally, then make sure you click on my face over here to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button as well. It just really helps us be able to reach more people on YouTube. And if you'd like to see the previous videos that we did at this property, then we'll link them up here. That was the first video that we did. And then this one down here is the second video we did at this property. So I look forward to seeing you next on one of these two videos.